So we're down at the keel here now. That's a little lying hole that I've drilled through the keel. That does look good. Well, this represents the beginning of another stage, starting the lining. Okay, now that I've got that fitted better, so we're down at the keel here now, and you'll see a couple of little marks along the bottom. Now what they are is, as hopefully you can see there nice and clearly, that's a little line hole that I've drilled through the keel to drain water. And so because the keel was already filled when I fitted it and the boat sat for a while, I just wanted to make sure there was no water in any of the cells and as it turned out there was there wasn't much it was like probably less than a cup full but all the same I didn't want that in the keel so I drilled a series of holes to drain that water there's one on the other side and that one is not a hole as you can see it's just where it was looking like it was a bit suspicious so I've just sanded that one as well as this one off to nothing and I'll paint those as well so I had one two and three there on this side and one on the other side and so what I'm doing now I've just wire brush ground those so that they're nice and clean got my trusty stick welder set up and I'm going to weld those up now and put paint on them whilst I'm painting all those other areas on the deck. So further to the little jobs that are banking up, there's been a few little tiny rust spots come up here and there. This is the cockpit of course, and it's just minor things, but I've elected to try and get on top of all of them before they get worse, basically. As you can see with this jib track, flat bar support which is welded onto the deck all those gray spots need to be done again they're all a little bit rusty this one on the end here was particularly bad it actually looks a lot better now that it's all been painted a couple of times but I may well put a bit of filler in that one and I do need to get on top of this one that's got a bit of pitting there it's a flat plate it's actually where the mast steps on the deck you can see the box there that I made up and welded on top and water's obviously collected on top of that and sort of pit rusted so I'm probably going to smear a little bit of filler in that after I paint that now. And here's the follow up to getting paint on those little chips. It's had two coats, coat three to be put on shortly. Okie doke, just to explain what I'm up to here. As you can see, I have two cleats here and there's two cleats on the hull floor also. And they are for mounting the cabin sole in this V-berth floor space here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bolt some angle, which has been hot dip galvanized underneath those two cleats and one on top of these two cleats here. What I'll be doing with all of the cabin sole is putting a little strip of rubber glued to whatever it is I'm having the cabin sole rest on so that I don't get that knocking noise where it's, you know, plyboard against 
whatever it's sitting on and so that it just absorbs a bit of the sound when you're walking through the boat. So I'll just work out the measurements for the lengths of these and as you can see the hull is tapered of course and so this end is going to need a taper on the end of the angle at both ends so that it fits snug. What I'll be doing with that is I'll be using 12 millimeter marine plywood but then it will be laminated with eight millimeters of rosewood and I'm going to end up with a bit of a fancy cabin sole look, very nautical, lots of people would have seen it but I'll save that for later. I do love getting into new jobs because I'm going to be working on this v-berth in terms of fitting it out with cabinets I decided that this floor space or cabin sole space would be far far nicer if I can have a cabin sole or at least some board in there to give me a flat surface to work on. This is where I'm going to put some angle iron then the cabin sole would be able to sit on top of that at the right floor height. So that's what I'm going to be doing now, cutting up that angle. It needs to be shaped a bit so it's going to be a little bit of mucking around but let's get started. <laughs> So let's see how these worked out. Telling myself just don't bang them on painted surfaces. <laughs> I'm hopeful. Oh, that's a treat. And well off that end too. <laughs> Good one. So just to explain also, I've opted for hot dip galvanized angle because that way, obviously where I've cut the ends, that will need to be painted. But otherwise, I can just leave that as is. Hot dip galve, it's had a very good dosing, I can tell. Paint the ends twice, bolt it in place, and that's done. I'm very pleased with that. Next one, let's have a look. Now this one needs little, little feet brackets to support it, but I should be able to see if it's going to fit. And it doesn't. So that 45 was actually good, it's just the depth. So I just need to take off a piece on the corner like that and that will be sweet. We'll have a look at that. That does look good. So I've got that angle fitting nicely and also I've made up those brackets which will bolt between the cleats on the hull up to this angle. And here's a little tip too. Save your plastic containers that food comes in. So long as they've got a flat bottom like this one has. That's my tzatziki dip. But yeah, they come in very, very handy just for mixing up small amounts of paints or epoxies rather than throw them out, give them a second life. This represents the beginning of another stage starting the lining and I'm starting in the v-berth here so what I've started to do is just take some measurements of that panel there's going to be one large panel which will go all the way from the anchor bulkhead 
back to the aft section of the V-berth. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the laser level so that I can work out what the angle is where this panel will shoot off forward there because it's not horizontal, it follows the line of the plating and then I'll go from there. Number one, take two. So this is the first look at what the lining is going to be like. He's an excitable lad. <laughs> I get excited when it's the next stages birthing and starting. And I'll just add and subtract what needs to be done to get that template the right fit. The great thing about this too, as you can probably see, is this is actually spanning nearly two meters in one piece. And I like the idea that it'll, it'll screw back in against those battens nicely. And it will just mean that there's one big panel without any joins of anything. So I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. Okay, now that I've got that fitted better with some better supports at the bottom, my goodness, that fits really, really well. It probably looks better than looking at the insulation, but I'll get the camera up close because it actually looks even better closer. It's actually touching those battens lovely, in other words, It'll pull against those battens really nicely. It'll give it a bit of curve, a bit of shape, which will be unnoticeably nice on the eye. I will also clearly put another piece down the bottom here. Join me next week, everybody, where I get that forehead cabin sole sorted little bit of fine tuning here, not much at all. Including getting the finished rosewood laminate pieces cut up and dressed. Toast. <laughs> the things that come out of your mouth. Your brain must just, I don't know, somebody explain that. This one here will need some little anchor lock. The V-birth bulkhead in the aft, in the aft section, the, at the aft. Please like subscribe, hit that bell and share. I'd really, really appreciate that. <laughs>